Hello everyone! My name is Liz Vaccarello and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Real Simple and the host of today's virtual event taking you through the Real Simple Idea Home. So for the last two years, we've created a space where we bring inspiring content to life for our readers, both in print and online and in-person events. But this year, I'm pleased to host a virtual tour of our home. And today we're gonna to take you through the Marbury, a boutique condominium building on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. So at a time when our homes are more important and more utilized than ever, we hope you'll find ideas and inspiration that you can implement into your own home, whether that's a fall recipe or a cute and clever way to organize things, or maybe a way to create a calm, creative space for yourself. I know I need all three of those things. Before we get started, all the content that you'll see today will live on realsimple.com for 30 days. I encourage you to upload your own ideas and remember to use the hashtag RSHome and at real underscore simple. All right, you ready for the tour? Let's go. Welcome to the entryway. The tricky part with this space was the sloped ceiling underneath this beautiful staircase a lot of people think it's wasted space and they don't know how to make it functional. But Katie Holdifer, who is our designer and is also a senior editor at realsimple.com, had a few tricks up her sleeve. First of all, she bought a bookcase from Ikea, turned it on its side, and then added these pretty cane doors from a, an outfit called Norse Interiors. They specialize in elevating Ikea branded furniture and it was just genius. She put a cushion on top and a few comfy pillows and all of a sudden you've turned wasted space into a cozy book nook or a place to take a nap. I wanna point out the rug. This rug is washable. So here you are in the foyer. It's the most high trafficked area of the house and we love a brand called Ruggable because of its high quality look, the design is beautiful, and the construction is washable and extremely durable. I also wanna point out another trick of Katie's was the blue paint going up the stairway. It's a really easy way to bring a little life to a windowless space. Now over here, you'll have the mirror drop zone. This is where you can put on a squirt of hand sanitizer, drop your keys, adjust your mask, get ready to come or go for the day. And of course, the staple of almost every entryway, your bench. This is a place where we can sit down and take off our shoes and even store them right here on this little shelf. At Real Simple, we love a good utility closet. And here is the one in this year's home, designed with our friends from Hoarderly. Tip one is to get everything off the floor. That way you have less room for clutter to take over. Where you can, add in shelving to suit your space and your needs. So Hoarderly used Alpha shelves from the container store on the right two thirds of the closet. And they saved the remaining space for hanging long handled cleaning tools here on the left. The heavier items like cat litter, garbage bags, live on the bottom shelves, while smaller items you reach for often are contained within clear bins at eye level. Label, label, label. This will ensure that the entire household is on the same page about not only where to find something, but where to put it back. Okay, now we're going to the living and dining room space. This is the great room designed by Max Humphrey and everything in here is from the Home Depot. The dining space is key. Max Humphrey says that dining rooms are always kind of a bummer for him to design because they're used one day a year. So he really felt like he wanted to create a multi-purpose space that can be used for working from home, for homework, but also as a place for the family to eat. Let's talk lighting. Max had a really interesting approach and says that you should use different lighting sources for a space where you're gonna be doing different things. So a pendant light, for example, can act almost as a task light over the table if you're doing homework. But then, if you wanna have ambient lights on to create more of a mood in the room, you can add or use those alone. Aren't those cute? For the walls, 
Max chose two of Bear's color of the year choices. That's one of Max's tips if you have trouble making paint choices at the store. Go with the brand's color of the year and they will often show you complementary colors uh, so that you know that you're on trend and that everything's working together. It's always fun to talk about art. Max framed some vintage bandanas. I love how it gives it sort of a curated look, but also a personal touch. This lovely kitchen was a joint project between Max Humphrey and Horderly. Uh, and because the kitchen is visible from the adjacent dining and living rooms, you want the colors to be complementary. So you'll notice the accessories pick up on that blue, the denim, and the natural wood. Once again, containment is key here. In the pantry, bins can help deep spaces look more orderly. And of course, you want to keep things that the kids are going to be reaching for near the bottom. In the fridge, you want to store meat and seafood on the bottom shelf, just in case it drips. And if possible, keep it in a container so that it's easily cleaned. And of course, don't forget that the fridge can also be labeled. This way, the people who are putting away the groceries know where things go. So this is fun. We had the tween room designed by Joy Cho. And the highlight here is this removable stick-on wall mural by Minted. I love the vibrant pops of yellow, which can be picked up throughout the rest of the room in mustards and citruses. So it's energetic, but it's not too kiddish. It's nice to position a desk near a window particularly in this age of virtual schooling, it sort of serves as a reminder that there is an outside. And then Joy chose this wonderfully colorful, vibrant pegboard. It's a nice way for the kid to put up their creations, take them down, do whatever they want with it. Here we are in the beautiful owner suite, designed by Rebecca Atwood and Kate Hamilton Gray. This room is all about pattern which is no surprise given that Rebecca is a beloved textile designer. And so what they did is they combined small scale patterns and textures in neutral earthy tones so that it all works seamlessly together. The walls are papered in one of Rebecca's designs. And you'll notice behind the headboard, it's that same design, but in a darker colorway. That combined with the thin black molding on the wall make it feel almost like an oversized headboard. I love the elegant touches that these women did in this suite. These lamps are stunning. Every pillow has a different texture. The art, the lamps, and even the faux plants, which they say is A-OK. -okay. If you don't have a green thumb, it's your space. The only idea here is to get a touch of nature into your living area. Quickly, guys, this closet is everything. It is designed by the Container Store, but Horderly's quick tip for anybody to streamline their closet is all about streamlining your hangers. Organize the clothes then by type, sleeve length, and then color. Another idea from Katie Holdefer, if you want to give the back of some shelving a little more design oomph, add a pop of wallpaper. Here she added this gorgeous gilded paper for a real luxe look, but you could just as easily use this technique to pop a bookcase or in the back of a coat closet. Ideas, ideas, ideas. Now, come with me for a very special place. This, my friends, is the woman cave or the library. It was designed with our friend Dana Isom Johnson, who is the creative head at Etsy. And it's all about personalization in this room. So I wanted bright, invigorating colors, artwork that makes you smile. That's my dog, Milo. It's a space that was made to spark joy and get the creative juices flowing. Now let's talk about wall storage. At Real Simple, we're always talking about maximizing your vertical space. And Dana used this open shelving as a place for me to display my favorite books and objects. But once they no longer fit or I want to change the vibe, off they go to my little free library. And then I wanted it to be a hangout zone for me and my girls. So if I'm working and I want to put the laptop away, I can put it in this fold-out wall desk. 
That way it's not a distraction and that I don't have a constant reminder of tomorrow's to-do list while I'm focusing and spending time with my family. So yet again, this room's design proves that wallpaper is alive and well. Even if it's used just on one wall, it can really add dimension and personality, particularly to a space that might be a little small. This pattern was super easy to apply and it came from a designer at Etsy. So presumably this is my woman cave and I wanted a real place to feel zen, to maybe meditate and look what Dana made in the closet. With that puff meditation pillow, a little bit of scent, a yoga block. I can see myself just living in here. Namaste. Mmm, I smell something delicious. Let's see what Real Simple Food Director Jenna Helwig is cooking up for us today. Thanks, Liz. I am cooking up a sheet pan apple crisp. This is a recipe from our October issue. It was developed by my colleague Ananda Edelstein and it is so delicious. It's easy and the perfect recipe for fall. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna grease the sheet pan with some butter. Here we go, and you wanna use a half sheet pan. If it's too small, it will kind of defeat the purpose of having all that extra lovely crispy topping. Nice and buttered. And then we're going to mix the apples right on the sheet pan. Of course, you can do it in a bowl if you want, but why wash another bowl, right? So we've got about three pounds of peeled and sliced apples. These are gala apples, which are a great all-purpose apple. Um, they are kind of sweet and tart. They hold their shape when baking, and they're not as expensive as honey crisps, which I love to eat, but I kind of save them for eating because they're a little pricey. So we've got our three pounds. It's about 11 gala apples, and I am going to drizzle on two tablespoons of lemon juice. This adds just a little nice tang to it, as well as helps keep the apples from browning. and then a quarter cup of melted butter. I like to use Kerrygold, it has a really nice rich flavor. Yum. And then a half cup of light brown sugar. There we go. And a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. Perfect. So now you can mix this all up with your hands. You can use a spoon. I'm gonna use my hands and they're gonna get very dirty and I'm going to have to wash them. Okay, so we're gonna set these yummy apples aside and make the crisp topping. So first of all, I'm gonna set up a cutting board. Here is a little pro tip. Um, to keep your cutting board from sliding around on the counter, to put a wet paper towel or towel underneath. It makes a huge difference. Yay, no sliding. So, okay, I've got a big bowl and I'm gonna grab some oats and flour and spices. And then of course, some butter. Lots of yummy good things here. All right, so we'll start by adding to the bowl one cup of rolled oats and one cup of just regular all-purpose flour. Go. And another half cup of brown sugar. Yum. And let's see, half teaspoon of salt. You know, even though this is a sweet dessert, we wanna have a little salt there. It helps bring out the flavors and balance the sweetness. And then some spices. This is what gives this crisp like such that wonderful fall fragrance. We've got three quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of ground cardamom. If you don't want to use the cardamom or you don't have it, that's okay. I know it can be a very polarizing spice, but I think it's delicious. So we're going to use it here. Just add that in. Great. And I'm going to give this just a little stir. Here is where the magic happens with the butter. So we want three quarter cups of cold diced butter here. So that's a stick and a half. And the butter, of course, is what gives the crisp topping its, you know, crispiness. There we go. 
And we want to dice this. You know, they don't need to be perfect cubes or anything like that. You just want them in pretty small pieces. So I'm going to get to work on that. And now I'm going to add the cubes into the flour mixture. And now here is the fun part. I'm gonna get my hands dirty and just dive right in and I'm gonna rub the butter into the flour mixture. I want it to form, you know, big and small clumps. But what I'm trying to do is make sure that all, or at least most of the flour is coated. And we've got some clumps starting to form. So you see, I've got these here. I wanna just keep going until we have less of this dry flour oat mixture hanging out. All right, this is looking great. So you'll see I've still got some bigger clumps, but it all looks, you know, kind of moist and yummy and um, not dry. So now I'm going to bring back the sheet pan with the apples. And I'm just gonna pour this topping over and make sure it's pretty evenly spread. So you can see that this is a really free form dish. There is nothing fussy about it, which is what I think makes the best desserts. All right, now it is going to go in a 375 degree oven until it's bubbly and golden and fragrant. And that will take about 55 minutes to an hour. All right, the crisp is done, it smells Amazing, I wish you could smell it. You have to make it so you can smell it because that's how good it smells. Um, you wanna serve it warm or at room temperature. Too hot, obviously, it is not going to be an easy or delicious eating experience. So this is just right, it's just warm, yum. Um, I'm going to scoop it out into bowls. Oh, love that topping. I'm telling you, when you have this much topping, you can even make layers of topping in your bowl, which is, just the best. All right, this is a big portion, but it's really good. It's worth it. I like to serve it with some vanilla ice cream. It just, it will melt a little and just add that little extra creaminess to it. Not too much. I don't want to take away from the apples. Maybe one more little scoop. Perfect. And if you don't finish this for dessert, really trust me, eat it for breakfast the next day with some plain Greek yogurt, so creamy and delicious. And because you have the yogurt, it is healthy. So enjoy, thanks very much. And now I'd like to pass it over to Jamie Hoard, the founder of the professional organization company Quarterly, who is going to show you some simple tips for organizing your home. Hi everyone, my name is Jamie Hoard. I am the founder of Hoardly Professional Organizing. And today we're in the Real Simple Home giving you an inside look of the spaces that we organize. So right now we're in the master bathroom. And in the bathroom you wanna make sure you're putting your daily used items in prime real estate. So some good prime real estate areas are behind the mirror and any top drawers. So behind the mirror here we have our mouth care and our makeup. We use some of our favorite acrylic organizers from the container store to separate out each category. We've also labeled each one, so that's super easy to put back. And then in our lower drawers here, we created a fun little hair accessory drawer. It's got our headbands and our hair ties. And in the lower drawer, we have our back stock items. So we've got backup shower, backup soap, and backup oral and face care, along with our travel bags. We also use some of our favorite organizers here, the Like It Bricks from the Container Store, and they come with little dividers uh, that you can separate out small categories. So that's it for the master bath. Let's head to the front closet. Okay, so here we have the front closet, which we turned into a utility and cleaning closet. There was no system uh, in this closet before, so we had these shelves installed. They are the Alpha shelves from the container store, which we love. Uh, they're super flexible and easily adjustable, uh, especially if you rent or have a growing family. Um, as you'll see here, this wall has a lot of uh, panels. Uh, so a good solution for a wall that has panels is to implement a utility track. That way you can just take the items off whenever you need access to them. 
Uh, we love keeping the floor as clear as possible, so using hooks on walls or doors whenever possible. When things are just landing on the floor, it becomes a landing spot and creates clutter. Uh, we also love to organize heavier items down low to lighter items up top. So down low, we've got our Arm & Hammer cat litter and our trash bags, up to our cleaning supplies, uh, paper goods, up to our utility and tools, which are less often used. We of course always love to label as well. Our favorite label maker is the Brother P-Touch Cube Plus. And here we've used their larger labels. And that's it for the utility closet. Now we'll head over to the laundry closet. So here we have the laundry closet. It's not surprising to see wasted space above the washer and dryer. So once again, we installed the Container Source Alpha system. We made sure to position the first shelf so that it doesn't interfere with this Lazy Susan. On this Lazy Susan, we put uh, items that are used often, like the Arm & Hammer and the dryer balls. And then on the shelves, we separated the linens by what bed they go to. So we've got the twin bed, the master bed, the guest linens, and an extra comforter. And the Alpha system is super easy to install yourself, which is another big reason why we love it. And lastly, we're using one of our favorite hooks here that holds both the ironing board and the iron. That's it for the laundry room. Now let's head into the kitchen to show you the pantry and the fridge. Okay, so here we've got the pantry, which are these two cabinets here. And at Horderly, we have an 11 step process that we go through in any space. So if you're tackling a space on your own, it's always best to start with a blank slate. So pull everything out, know that it's going to get worse before it gets better, sort into piles of likes with likes, and then determine what you no longer need or no longer love. And when it comes to a pantry, make sure you're checking expiration dates and getting rid of those expired items. So when you're placing items back into the space, it starts to get a little strategic. So you wanna determine uh, what's prime real estate and what's not prime real estate. Uh, easily accessible areas should be the items you're grabbing most often. And then not prime real estate areas can be items like backstock or overflow. So down here, we use larger bins to store larger items like uh, snack bags, breakfast items like cereal, oatmeal. And then the shelf that's more at eye level, we use clear bins. And these bins come in all different sizes so you can really maximize your space. Uh, up high, we use some of our favorite Lazy Susans. This is our favorite bamboo one. And here we've got our favorite divided Lazy Susan to store uh, grab-and-go snack bars. And up high, we've got baking items. We also use bins up high. That way you can easily pull down, grab what you need, stick back up, and the shelf's always staying neat and tidy. It's super important to label in a kitchen and a pantry uh, because this is a space that everyone in the household uses. Uh, so everyone should be on the same page, know where to find an item and know where to put it back. Also keep in mind if you want children to access their snacks, keeping those items down low where they can grab them. We used our favorite bin clip labels here to label the baskets. And that's our pantry. Be sure to check out Horderly for more inspiration and tips. And now I'm going to send it over to Dana, who's going to teach you how to create a calm and creative space. Hi there, my name is Dana Isom Johnson. I'm the trend expert at Etsy.com. And I am so pumped to share with you guys today how to create your very own meditation women's cave, okay? I had the pleasure of working with the editor-in-chief, Liz, hey Liz, of creating this space just for her. So let's talk about those key elements that you need to create a space just for you. Now, the first thing that I wanted to tackle was the color palette. Liz shared with me that she loved the outdoors, she loved trees, and so I wanted that to be the inspiration for the color palette. So you'll see throughout the space, there's lots of greens, lots of blues, all things that are inspired by nature. I wanted to make sure that the outdoors was coming inside. 
The second thing was about in inviting other textures into the space. So you'll see the jute rug, you'll see these great details on these pillows, you'll see other elements throughout the space that really allow it to just have a bit of depth and not so monotone, okay? The third thing, and this is especially great for when people are shopping on Etsy.com, let's take a little walk over here. That's about adding personalized details. So if you see this illustration, this is actually a custom portrait made of Liz's pup, Milo. And what makes that so important when creating these spaces is that you want things that are constantly gonna put a smile on your face, that are gonna inspire you and just make you feel warm and happy. I know that Liz loves her pup, Milo, so I'm hoping that she really loves that custom portrait. The final thing is that because this space is really about sparking creativity, feeling grounded and calm, I wanted to make sure that those elements were present in the space. So you'll see things like Palo Santo Six, you'll even see aromatherapy bits, and my personal favorite, a few sage sticks and crystals to make sure that you are balancing yourself and feeling at ease. So that's really the area where she's chilling and hanging out, but now let's move on to the workspace. Okay, let's talk about your workspace. Now for so many of us, space is an issue and we wanna make sure we maximize every piece of square footage we have, right? That's why I love a secretary desk option. It looks like a piece of wall art when it's just there, right? But brace yourself, there's a surprise. You open it up, you pull it down, and you've got an instant workspace. Now, again, this is great because it's space saving. There's also all these incredible inlays in here for you to add markers, notepads, all the things you need to have a successful work day. The other thing that I love, because let's bring it back, this space is meant to inspire. This space is supposed to uplift and make you feel warm and cozy, right? So I've added in here inside this great cork, cork board space, affirmation cards. Great way to start your day, to not have a nice little positive jolt and be inspired. Okay, so as you guys are getting your creative juices out and working away, it's also very important to make sure that you keep a waste basket nearby to make sure you stay tidy. And I absolutely love this blue option from Glad because it fits in with the color palette and it just works. So now that we're finished working, let's meditate, shall we? Okay guys, we have made it to my favorite area of the room. I give you my meditation area. This used to be a traditional closet. So this can give you inspiration on how to maximize space. I just removed the bar, removed the traditional shelf, made sure to add some personality. And to do that, I used the leftover wallpaper that I had from the accent wall in the space and then added some basic necessities that Liz would need for her meditation room. So some shelves, I know she enjoys yoga, so I popped some yoga blocks in there, a meditation singing bowl, some natural uh, cleaning solutions for her yoga mats, and then as a little piece of Dana popped into the room, uh, my love of crystals. So I know that Liz wanted a creative space, so I got an orange calcite that's all about energizing yourself uh, and making sure that creativity is constantly sparked when this is around. So I pop this in there and uh, some cute storage bags. And then of course, what's a meditation space without the cushion? So I found these incredible cushions, of course, from an Etsy seller to get you nice and zen. So when you're ready, you can just hop on down Get in your meditation position, zone out, and have your moment of clarity. So I'm gonna actually meditate right now before Liz comes and takes over the space, but for now, I'm gonna toss it back to Liz. Thanks so much, and see you soon. Thank you to all of you who joined us today. I hope you enjoyed the show and maybe learned something that you can bring into your own home. If you don't already, I hope that you'll consider subscribing to Real Simple Magazine 
for the kinds of tips and inspiration and the whole feeling that you had here today. And always, you can visit realsimple.com. Thank you to all of our sponsors, to the amazing Real Simple team, and to all of you for watching. I hope to see you next year in person.